So here is where we sit. That was conservation of matter. This is conservation of energy. And there's a lot of complicated discussion there. All it really says is that V, which stands for voltage, V is something like an electrical pressure. It isn't a pressure because the units are wrong. It's charge per, it's energy per unit charge instead of energy per unit volume. Energy per unit volume is pressure. But in electrical circuits, we don't measure the volume to figure out how much stuff is flowing. We measure the electrical charge. And so the energy per electrical charge is something that we call voltage. The difference, delta V, is the thing that's important. It's like a difference in pressure. It's like a difference in electrical pressure. If there's a high pressure in a fluid here and a low pressure here, then, it's, then there's something trying to push the, the fluid from high pressure toward low pressure, if there's a pipe between the two, I mean connecting two things. Same kind of thing for voltage. If you have a high voltage on one side and a low voltage on another, then there's something pushing electrical charge from high voltage to low voltage. And this discussion just says, uh, we don't have to worry about kinetic energy, we don't have to worry about gravitational potential energy, so we can throw those terms away and all we have is uh, a voltage in place of a pressure difference. We have a battery in place of a pump. And we still have resistors. So it's the same kind of a problem. The units are different. The unit of charge flow is coulombs per second. One coulomb per second is one amp. I wrote A, but I could just as well write AMP. One amp is one coulomb per second. That's the cur that's a measurement of the amount of current that that flows. Well, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because you've done you've seen this in chemistry. How do bat uh, 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 how does a pump work? A pump physically grabs a hold of fluid and pushes it. So that's how it adds energy. That's how a pump adds energy. The way a battery adds energy is, is trickier, but it's similar. Uh, this is a, a crude kind of battery, but it's at least one, one thing that would work. A chunk of zinc here, this reaction runs. When this reaction runs, it turns some of the zinc on the chunk into ions here, and it produces two electrons, so suddenly there are extra electrons there. You probably know that electrons repel each other, so those elect extra electrons would like to be somewhere, and oddly enough, we, if we have a, a reaction with a copper, a piece of copper over here, uh, those two electrons, if you put two electrons on here, and take two electrons from there, you can run the rest of the reaction. And so that's the those are the two reactions that run. This thing is constantly pushing electrons out. This thing is constantly gobbling electrons up. And the result is that electrons flow from here, from the negative side, over to the positive side of the battery. This is a symbol for a battery. The wire here is zero resistance. This line here is the high voltage side of the battery, the positive side. This little line is the low voltage side of the battery, the negative side. This negative side is spitting electrons out. This positive side is trying to gobble up electrons. If you connect the two with a resistor, then the electrons have a way to get from one side to the other, and the battery, those reactions happen. Those reactions will just keep happening and keep happening and keep happening until you've run out of stuff to react. And then the battery is dead. The result of that is this battery
pushes with a constant voltage on electrons. If I took this resistor out, even though this battery was pushing electrons this way, if there was no way to get to the other side, there wouldn't be a current flowing. There would be a voltage because the battery would try to make electrons flow. It would constantly be pushing. But there wouldn't be any electrons flowing, so there wouldn't be any current. I want to, remo I want to make electrical currents look even, well, more like fluids than, than, uh, than you might think they, they do. So I, I put this simulation on, on SmartSight in case you wanted to play with it. This is a, this is a, a electrical circuit that you can set up for yourself. That's a wire. This is another wire. You can connect them. These little blue dots are going to represent electrons. In, in metals, electrons are the things that flow. I can, that didn't work. I can put in a light bulb. I think I can. That's a light bulb. I can put a battery in. Let me put in a switch just so I... This switch connects the circuit. So this switch, when it's open, um, there, there's, there's a gap there and, and electrons can't flow. But what happens if I close this switch? Because this battery is trying to push electrons. The positive side is, of the battery is the side with a little bump on it. So that's the positive side on the left. The negative side is trying to push electrons out. But if this isn't connected, there's no way for them to go. Watch the light bulb when I flip the switch. Because it lights. Um, Does a battery spit out an electron that eventually goes, that, that, that then goes up here and lights this up? Well, yes. But what it does first is it spits out an electron, but because there's electrons everywhere in the wires, just like pipes have water everywhere, because there's electrons everywhere, when this spits out an electron, it just pushes all the other electrons forward. And so that's what's going on when an electrical circuit goes, is that the battery is constantly pushing electrons through. So I skipped over something on, the, on that last, uh, and, and we'll talk about it more next time, on that last slide. And that is that electrons are negatively charged. You probably know that. We define current as the direction positive charge would be flowing. So that means, <laughs> We defined current a long time ago. Ben Franklin defined current. And uh, electrons weren't discovered until the beginning of the 20th century. So there were hundreds of years when, when current had a definition. And so we just keep it. Why not? Honestly, why not? Because there are positive charges. There are positive anions in cells. Positive anions can flow. That's the direction of current. The only reason to, to reverse our, our ideas is, is if we have some preference for electrons as opposed to positive ions. And in biology, I don't think you would. In, in physics, I, you know, we like electrons, so uh, we, we might have a preference. But in biology, I would think uh, ions are just as good. And so the current here is actually going clockwise, opposite to the direction that the electrons are going. Current is flowing from the positive side of the battery through the through the light bulb, around, and into the negative side of the battery. That's the, our definition of the direction of the current. Even though the things that are carrying charge are going the opposite way, they're negatively charged, and so, and so our definition of the current is, is fine for the way positive charge would move. Well, play with that if you want to. Um, I got at least a couple of questions for you. First one. The first one that starts with a reminder up here at the top. Uh, we assume these bare wires have zero resistance and only the things that are the squiggly lines are, are resistors, so have resistance. 
So these are two resistors wired in series. It turns out that the name for this is series. If there's an electrical current through the combination, the current through R2, that's a big resistor, is A equal to B half C smaller than, but not necessarily half, the current through R1. 